So one night I'm watching Mask of Zorro, the one from 1998 directed by Martin Campbell, you know, the one that has that Batman Forever moment with the Z? Yeah, that one. And you know what? It holds up pretty well. It's a really entertaining, fun action movie with tons of great sword fights and adventure. And uh, the only thing that was kind of bugging me is that it felt oddly familiar, like I'd seen this movie before, like I'd seen it several times before. And then I saw the screenwriter's name pop up at the end credits, and it was Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio. Now, if you don't know who these guys are, they made their name back in the day working on the script for Aladdin, this little animated film you may have heard of. Before that, they worked on the script to Little Monsters. They worked on the movie The Puppet Masters. Um, I, now they've worked on the National Treasure movies. They, did, they were behind the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. They worked on the story for Treasure Planet. They also wrote the screenplay to The Road to El Dorado, which was another thing that was uh, familiar to me. The whole time I was watching this film, like, I don't know, two weeks ago, I kept going, man, is this The Road to El Dorado? And it's funny if you actually look at the plots, how similar they are outside of the fact of El Dorado. But it's just kind of like, huh, okay, that's interesting. And um, you got to think about this at the time when these guys were trying to make these swashbuckler films. Because that's clearly what they wanted to do. And, and you could see that early on somewhat in Aladdin, but it really comes full force in Mask of Zorro, which feels like like Pirates of the Caribbean before Pirates of the Caribbean, that the tone of it, the action scenes, really before Gore Verbinski came in. Because pirate films were dead. I mean, think about uh, Cutthroat Island. That movie cost $100 million and only made $5 million. It was a big bomb. It was a disaster. Nobody was really into pirates, and then this film came out, and it became the biggest thing ever. And it had a lot to do with that screenplay. These guys had a lot of story beats that they had developed over the years, and I'd say that they honestly just shifted them over from screenplay to screenplay. And then finally, with the right crew and actors and people that were willing uh, to collaborate and work off these things, you finally got the movie that had all these elements come together. Because to me, The Mask of Zorro, while having some awesome action scenes like the horse scene where he jumps from one horse to another, which is great, don't get me wrong, and it's fun to watch Anthony Hopkins, um, the movie sort of lacks something else. They feel a little unfinished. They're a little shallow. By the way, why does the dude from the Road del Dorado look like the bad guy from The Mask of Zorro? Am I the only one who's ever noticed this? I mean, you could say, oh, well, this happens all the time, and that's fine. And I get that they're two different types of characters, but I couldn't let this go when I was watching this. It was like, oh my god, it's the beard and the hair. It's like... I, I don't know how that even happened. Was there some storyboard thing? And they were like, well, hey, this is what's in. This is the kind of hair and beard we need. Even the other character, which I'm sorry that his name uh, is slipping my mind right now. I believe he was voiced by Kevin Klein. Even though when I was a kid, I used to think that was John Cusack. I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's kind of drawn somewhat like John Cusack. But look at him in that blue outfit, all right? He's flirting with the girl and all that. And how he has the uh, little soul patch there in his hair. And then look at Antonio Banderas in the dance sequence from The Mask of Zorro. Now, I'm not saying this was done on purpose, and I know it's I know they don't look exactly the same, but man, it's weird. It's a little bit too similar for me. I mean, what were they looking for in the Mask of Zorro? Or what was the whole movie about really? What what did they fight over? What did they blow up at the end? Gold! It was all about gold. Everything. The bad guys wanted gold, Antonio Benaderas wanted to stop them from getting the gold. Everything that exciting and that happens in the movie is about gold. What's the Rodel Dorado about? Gold. Man, they even, they even, it's like these two movies are like, it's like they were being written at the same time. And then, okay, okay, we go back to Aladdin. What's Aladdin have in it? Gold! Aladdin goes in the damn cave to get the, the magic lamp, and there's gold everywhere. Now, that's not the, the main focus of the movie, but it's still there. What about Treasure Planet? They wrote the story for that movie. Oh, well, well no shit. Gold. Of course. It's called Treasure Planet. Come on, people. I shouldn't have to explain this stuff to you. So these guys are obsessed with gold. They were obsessed with it for a decade, and then finally, we got Pirates of the Caribbean, where we got the gold coins with the little skull images, little heads on them, and, you know, they're all dead bodies now and stuff, so that's pretty cool. That was like, okay, you guys have been developing this gold fetish, and now it's, now it's coming full force. They also worked on National Treasure, right? So, like, was that about gold? Wasn't that about him stealing the Declaration of Independence or some shit? I don't remember. Was there gold in those movies? Why are you guys so obsessed with gold? What is with you, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio? Do you guys hope that one day you're going to get paid in only gold? Is it just something when you were children you wanted to write gold stories? What the fuck? I don't get this. Like, don't get me wrong. I get that you want to go back to certain storylines and character archetypes 
and tones from a different era of stories in general, not just movies. You want to do the Three Musketeers. You want a good old-fashioned swashbuckler. And man, do they not not nail the tone? They get it. They get why we love those movies. They get why why we enjoy them and, and why they hold up a lot of the time and why we're a fan of someone like a like an Errol Flynn. Why we're a fan of the Sinbad movies. You know, you like the ting, 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 little sword things. And maybe these guys are trying to somewhat tap into the story that we've all been familiar with our whole lives. Maybe they're doing some George Lucas Star Wars thing where they're trying to take all these classic stories and, and myths and mix them together into new things. Maybe it's some fresh perspective. Or maybe they're just hacks. If everything is the same, nothing is special. Huh. Thank you, Lady Starlight, whoever the hell you are. Everything in the world is exactly the same. From the great philosopher Kanye West. That's a quote from the symposium, if you want to look it up. Just saying. Why does Tom Cruise and Steve Jobs look the same to me in these Rolling Stone covers? I don't get it. Something's wrong with my brain. I'm slowly losing my mind and I don't understand it. What is going on? Everything looks the same to me. It's all the same. It's all the same. And I just need to sleep.